Hello. The last drawstring video I did um, was a very simple, small one that was done for my students who were in lockdown because of the pandemic. If you had a needle and thread and a little scrap fabric, you were able to do the project. But now we're back in the shop, so that means we can use our machines again. And I've got a little bit bigger bag for you to make, and we'll take it step by step. You can actually make it any size you want, but let's just start with what I have. Um, and here we go. I have this pattern here that I made. It's 11 inches on one side and the other side it's eight and three quarter inches. You can make it any size you want, but that's the size that I chose for this one. And there's this little funny symbol you can't see. It's got arrows on the end and a line that turns down to this edge. That means one, this is the edge or it could be this one. Uh, the side that I leave to make a fold because the bag has to be double this size. So I'm gonna, I found this piece of fast scrap fabric and I'm gonna take it and you see this is the right side, this is the wrong side. I'm gonna take it and double it over. Uh, usually you cut your fabric out with patterns on the wrong side um, and that's in case you have to do any markings, you don't have to uh, worry about um, making markings on the right side of the fabric. Okay, so I've almost got this together here and folded it. It's important that we don't cut um, this side here because we want to leave it round or uncut. So I'm going to place my pattern on the edge of that fold. I'm going to go ahead and pin it down. You don't have to, but it might help just to stabilize it. And then after I pin it down, I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. Once you have that, you've got your bag um, fabric. Now notice that now we have a nice long piece of fabric that will become your bag. It'll be a little bit smaller than this, but you'll see that um, it is basically that size. So now let's go to the next step. So now you're going to search all the way around the whole rectangle. But for clarity's sake, I'm going to switch to a white piece of fabric, this muslin, just so that you can see what I'm doing better. So like I said, right now we're just going to search around the edge. We're going to keep this edge lined up with the presser foot. Be careful, there's a blade right there. And so you don't want to... Um, cut off any fabric or um, get your fingers in that way. But anyway, lift the presser foot. There's a lever in the back. Line up your fabric underneath the presser foot and then sew it. When you get to the edge, go ahead and run the machine, the thread off the, the machine. And then lift the presser foot again and insert it. You can cut off those little ears after a while. And two more sides. Now this side is a selvage, and I really don't have to do that because it's not gonna unravel, but for the sake of a sample, I'm gonna go ahead and pretend that it is cut, and I would be searching that edge as well. And when you're done, you just snip off the um, excess there. 
you just cut it and you should have a piece of fabric that is surged all the way around the edge. Here's the fabric. You can see that all the way around the edge, the um, surging has happened. And you can just kind of clip those little ears that it makes. Um, and this way you won't have to worry about that tangling in any of your sewing. And there you go. We're going to be working on the wrong side. So you see I marked this fabric to say wrong side here um, just so that we're reminded what side it is because you can't tell with this thing. So what we're gonna do is from that shorter edge we're gonna mark an inch okay and let me kind of take a ruler I'm taking a pencil I don't need the scissors and I know that my inch mark is right there in that center of this see-through ruler so I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a line um, just because you see the fabric wants to wiggle on me that'll give me an idea of where I have to fold it so I'm going to turn this around to the other side and again I'm staying on the wrong side and I'm gonna mark my half inch or no I'm sorry I said half inch one inch See that line that I just made? That's just so that I know where to fold it. So the reason that we did that line on the wrong side is so that we can fold it over right along that line. And then we're gonna pin it if you feel you need to. And we're gonna stitch down that flap. We're just gonna go just above uh, about a quarter of an inch or half an inch above your surging line. So I'm gonna grab the tails of my thread. I'm gonna position my needle. Um, yeah. Notice that my surging is almost uh, parallel to the presser foot. And then I'm gonna Back stitch a little and then keep going. I want to get to the end, you back stitch as well. From there, and I'm going to back stitch and forward. And get your needle up, snip the threads. And you're going to do the same thing to the other side. So again, I'm working on the wrong side. I see my little fold line. I turn it over. I'm going to pin it down just because I can. And so I'm going to do the same thing. Now, again, I've got the wrong side to the outside. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna match up these uh, ends, this longer end, and I'm going to stitch just from that sewing line that I just did crossways, from there down to the end. And again, if you have to pin it in place to get it to stay, pin it in place. Now you can either use this side of the machine or that side of the machine and because I'm, I'm going to turn this around actually. This way I can have my work be on this side of the machine. Okay now again I'm not going to sew 
from the top of the fabric. I'm just going to sew from that last stitching line. I'm just going to do a quarter of an inch and this time this edge of the fabric I'm going to line up with the edge of the inside of the press of foot. And you want to again back stitch to keep the seams from coming apart and just go ahead and stitch all the way down. Back stitch at the end. And then you pull it out. You're going to do the same thing to the other side. Trim your threads. Extra threads. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. Oops. To this side. I'm going to match up my tops. I'm going to pin it. And if I have to pin down here as well, I will, but this is pretty easy handling fabric. Okay, and I'm good again. I'm only gonna stitch from that one spot from, from that line down. I'm gonna back stitch a little bit. And then I'm gonna take my pin out, nice straight pin out. And back stitch at the bottom. And you're basically done with your bag. Um, now you just have to turn it inside out. Poke out the little corners. And you have a bag. But we're not done yet. We've got to um, put our, our threads in. Okay, I have two pieces of ribbon. It could be cord, it could be leather cord, it could be cotton cording, there's no tell, you can use all kinds of things. But then these two pieces are both at least three times the uh, size of the opening. It's a little bit over three. And so what we're gonna do is uh, I put a piece of um, a safety pin on the end and I'm going to weave it through the openings that you left when you sew this. So I hope you can see it good enough. I'm putting it through the opening on the end. And I'm threading it through. And getting it to the other side. I'm going to continue on to the next opening, the other side. I'll just use the safety pin to guide it through the channel and then the fabric that gathers, you just pull it back. I'm almost done with this one side. we have the cord is through that section and once I have that cord through that section I'm going to take the safety pin off and just tie the end put a little knot in the end Now we're gonna, we could just leave it like that and have a one string drawstring bag, but um, we're gonna put two of them. So I've got my other piece of ribbon, but instead of starting on this end, I'm gonna start on this other end so that my tie will be on that side. So I'm gonna insert the safety pin in the opening and start guiding it through. Ok, 
Put that to one side. And now I'm going to continue on to the other side. And once I get it through both sides, I'll do the same thing like I did on the other side. I'll just tie a knot in the end of the strings and our bag will be done. there. There we go. And again, I'm going to take the safety pin off. I'm going to grab the ends together, put a knot in the end to get in there. Okay, there it goes. Try not to use too much thread or ribbon. Looks like I gotta start over. It happens. And once I have my knot, we're done. And so I have my two threads and I can pull it tight. Or, there we go. And I can stuff it with stuff. See, I could put this little jelly thing in there and pull my string tight. And I got me a little bag. There we go. And we're done. <laughs>